Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Eric Beal, and welcome to Let's Get Digital. Um, a little bit about myself. This is my first time presenting with Phys Ed Summit and uh, working with Phys Ed Agogi. I'm really excited to share a little bit about what goes on in my gym and a little bit about my program with you and hopefully give you some ideas to help you out and uh, make you a better teacher. And uh, I'm 28 years old. I'm kind of a summer child when it comes to teaching PE. This is only my third year. I'm finishing up right now. Um, it's been awesome. It's been a lot of fun. Last year, I was very fortunate to win uh, Young Professional of the Year for the Northeastern District of IA Food. I've also been presenting uh, at just workshops, conferences in Illinois, uh, like our county conference, uh, our county institute, uh, IA Food State Conference, a couple of workshops in Illinois and led a couple uh, ESP chats, uh, or led an ESP chat, uh, an IA for chat. Uh, just really passionate about PE and looking forward to sharing a little bit about what goes on with my program. So let's get started and let me share my screen. All right, uh, so let's get digital. First, let me move my camera up here in the corner. Hopefully it's out of the way and boom. All right, uh, so let's get digital. Basically, uh, to go over what we're doing, I do this with presentations, I do this with uh, my teaching, I go over the what, why, and how. So what are we learning today? We're learning how to, why and how to use digital tools to enhance your PE program. I'm gonna show you a lot of stuff that I use that works for me. Maybe it's not gonna work for you, but hopefully it inspires you to think of ways you can utilize that stuff and make it work for you. Why are we learning it? Why is it so important? Uh, so many people right now are sharing out all these incredible resources online and all these things that you can use to help enhance your program. Uh, right now, people, especially with the HPE at home, hashtag on Twitter, people are sharing out stuff like crazy and is awesome because all it's doing is it's making our profession better for our students, for us, for advocating for quality PE, which is amazing to see a uh, sharing community, just a bunch of teachers helping each other out. How do you know you'll learn it? Hopefully you'll walk away today with a couple ideas and things that you can add to your program. Uh, so I always start off kind of with like a little quote. Uh, this is something that just really bugs me and grinds my gears. Uh, I hear it a lot just from people I know, uh, teachers I've talked to, and unfortunately I hear it in the PE community a little bit. Uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? So, you know, you might have been teaching for, uh, you know, five years, 10 years, 20 years, doesn't matter. Maybe your stuff is going great. You've really uh, honed in you know, what you do and you, it's going awesome for you, which is great, but you can still improve on it, right? We're, as teachers, we're always trying to instill that growth mindset into our students. So why not uh, show students that we have that growth mindset, that we can still uh, dive in on new topics to enhance our program, uh, that we can learn new stuff and make PE better for them, even if it is already pretty good, right? How can we improve? We're trying to instill that in our kids. So lies, fake news. Uh, basically, this is something that's going to cripple you and make it really tough for you to adapt, especially with COVID-19 going on right now. We don't know what PE is really going to look like. When all this is said and done, maybe it's going to be social distancing in the gym. Maybe we're going to be doing a remote learning for a little bit. Honestly, I don't know. But I know this stuff is going to help me figure out a way to deal with that. So before COVID, uh, what PE looked like for me was, I have about 500 kids in my school. <clears throat> I teach all the kids. Uh, I'm the only PE teacher in that building. And I actually have a little bit of time in my schedule where I travel to another school close by and I teach half a day on a Friday. Uh, I have 25 minute classes. Uh, every kid has PE three times a week. Since it's only 25 minutes, it's gonna be kind of quick. <clears throat> so the kids come in, there's an inside activity set up. As you can see over here, I use my projector all the time. I have it set up on a little cart, just uh, plugged into the wall. I set up two cones to kind of uh, make that cord taut. So that way kids don't trip over it. And to be honest, even if I didn't have those cords, or even if I didn't have those cones out, I think I've only had kids trip over that cord maybe a couple times. Most of the time they do stay just away from it. I do have a large gym, which is pretty nice. I have a double gym. But I mean, the projector just become part of our class. You know, once. Once it's in there for a little bit, it's just normal. Kids know to stay away from it. Uh, I haven't had kids hit it with balls too often or anything like that. It's not really a big deal. Uh, and it's so beneficial to what I do, which is awesome. Uh, and I couldn't imagine teaching without it now. So I have that uh, inside activity projected up on the screen. Sometimes it's an inside activity that we've already done. 
sometimes it's a new one, but you'll see how I use the projector and use the screen to kind of assist me in my teaching and make it so another teacher's in there and I can actually walk around and go help out the other kids. Or I can, you know, assess, I can uh, participate with the kids. We'll talk a little bit about that later. After this activity, we kind of go in, gather at the center circle, we go over our lesson focus for the day, the what, why, and how. Then we get into the main part of the lesson, probably spend about 14 minutes, I would guess, in the main lesson with the kids and them just moving around, uh, working on our learning targets. And then afterwards, we bring it back to the center circle, we wrap up, uh, we do a little maybe assessment with a pregnant question, maybe just a cognitive question uh, that I ask them, maybe a thumbs up, I'm sorry, something or we relate back to a learning target and I just have them self-assess self -assess themselves as they leave the gym and tap, you know, wow, got it, almost not yet, how they think they did uh, for that day. <clears throat> I have a schedule that's kind of crazy, uh, back to back to back classes. I don't have a break in between classes, not even like a five minute or two minute break. Uh, and sometimes I'll go from, you know, fifth grade starting out my morning to kindergarten right afterwards. I gotta switch out to third grade. So uh, the projector really does help me with that, and it really helps with those transition times, and I'll talk about that a little bit too. I do have to teach double classes every now and then by contract. I kind of have 10, up to 10 a week, but I think this year I only had three. I actually took it so I would have less plan time and less uh, double classes, because I could have had more plan time and just got more double classes, but I honestly can't stand teaching double classes. I'd much rather have a smaller class size so I can really engage with those students. And uh, I normally have about 26 kids in a class. Uh, I think our first grade sections this year, I had a class of 19. And then, you know, one of my uh, third grades, I think I had 32. I also have students with uh, special needs in our, in our gym too, that are just blended in. Uh, sometimes they'll have an adaptive PE teacher in there with them too. Sometimes I'll have a TA. Uh, sometimes I'll have one TA for three of them. Uh, you know, we figure it out, we make it work for us. Uh, and I got carpeted floors and as you can see, projector out, I use it all the time. Biggest game changer to my teaching, literally can't emphasize how important it is to utilize one. At least that's what works for me. All right, so I'm a, our school is a Google district. Uh, we use Google everything uh, besides Gmail, which is a little frustrating, but it's okay. Uh, and all of our second to fifth graders have Chromebooks, which is really cool. So we can utilize a lot of stuff through Google and that's what works for me. I'm gonna show you how I use that, and I'm gonna be honest with you here. I'm gonna show you things that I do, and I'm gonna give you some instructions for how I use them and how I do it, but you're not going to be able to follow that stuff step by step by step. The only way you can learn is by just diving in and trying it out for yourself and seeing what works for you, right? Because what I do might not work in your situation, everyone's different, and we know that as teachers, especially PE teachers, we all have a different scenario. Uh, so play around with this stuff. If you wanna learn, uh, how to uh, utilize these digital resources. You gotta be willing to just try it out. You're not gonna break your computer. You're not gonna get a big virus. Uh, just watch a couple YouTube videos, Google search stuff, uh, figure it out. And hopefully I'll give you some ideas today of things that you can uh, work on. So <clears throat> the biggest thing I use is Google Slides. Google Slides is, uh, goes hand in hand with my projector. I put everything in slideshows and project it up. It is awesome, a great place to store stuff. Uh, I'll put in the resources a uh, link to my ESB chat that uh, I moderated on uh, utilizing Google Slides. <clears throat> Google Drive is awesome too, just a place to store everything digitally. Uh, keep that organized, it's gonna make your life a lot easier. And we'll talk about that next. Uh, sheets too. Sheets I've kind of been working on this year specifically. I found out how I can use it for my planning and how I can use it for grading. And it has been a big game changer. I'm hoping to dive deeper into Sheets too because I know there's more stuff I can do with it too. Uh, I just need to learn more. And then Google Forms, I don't use Google Forms that much. I do use it for skill assessments and we'll talk about that too. Uh, but sometimes you can use Google Forms for cognitive assessments and I'll show you how I do that uh, in Google Classroom too. But it's just another really awesome feature of Google. And then Classroom, I, I do use that quite a bit. Uh, not so much for like grading and posting stuff all the time, but it's just a really nice place to share out links to things. So you know, sometimes I'll share out slides, sometimes I'll share out a link to a Flipgrid. Basically, Classroom is a digital classroom where you can uh, have your students join and you can share stuff out. So at the beginning of the year, I would share out a link to my website on Google Classroom, so that way they can easily find it. Uh, I also share out uh, information for parents. 
Sometimes I'll share out links to my slides, my uh, units. Sometimes I'll share out links to Flipgrid. It all depends, but it's just a really nice place to post stuff and kids can utilize it too when they bring in their Chromebooks in the weekend. And then Google Docs, I don't use it too much. Sometimes I'll put links into Google Docs and share out a Google Doc uh, to parents or things like, you know, take your parents PE week, I'll put in information on there, uh, but we'll touch base on it. All right, so Google Drive. Like I said, it's gonna help you stay organized. I put all my lesson plans in there. Sometimes I'll find things on Twitter that people share out in a Google Doc, or Google Slide. And anything I find online, I can just make a copy of it. I can easily access that or access that from my computer here. And it's cool because sometimes I'll have my work computer up over here. I'll have my personal computer over here. I'll have my Google Drive open in one, uh, looking at something. And then I'll have uh, my other computer with Google Drive over here and I can access it from multiple devices. I, I can color coordinate and make subfolders. You'll see in my presentation, I'm a color coordinated nut. Uh, all my units and stuff are color, color coordinated. Uh, it really helps with folders in my opinion for making stuff easy to find and we'll, I'll show you that in a second. You make subfolders for everything. Uh, that's really helpful. Starring files is something I just found out about this year, which is really, really helpful. Just an easy way to uh, find stuff quick. Uh, and then your shared with me uh, part, not a big deal in my opinion I just clear it out every now and then it's not something I use all the time basically anytime you open up a document you find on Twitter or a document you find online or someone something something someone emails to you you open it up and it pops up in your share to me you can add it to your drive uh, I just clear that out because anything I want to use I always just add to my drive so let's take a look at my Google Drive right now and I'll show you kind of what it looks like so over here on the left side you'll see kind of like a tab uh, bar where it has priority, my drive, shared drives, all this stuff over here. So priority, I don't really play around with that too much. Uh, basically, you can make things priority of what you're working on and when you accomplish it, you can take it off your priority tab. My drive here, you can see you can have folders set up. Up here, it shows recent things you've been working on. So obviously this presentation, uh, my remote learning plan, or things that I've edited today or opened in today. You can see all your recent stuff up there. It's stuff that you can quickly find. And you might also see a lot of <clears throat> files down here. In my opinion, if you have a lot of files down there, I would try and organize those into folders just because making folders for everything and subfolders is gonna make your life a lot easier. In my drive, <clears throat> one of my, and notice you can color coordinate these, let me go back. So my physical education uh, folder here is green because Patterson is, our school colors are green and gray. So physical education makes sense for me that it's green. I also have like an IAFRD one here, a uh, professional one. I use it for grad school a lot. And you know, our grad school color is blue, so that makes sense for me. But in physical education, you'll see a bunch of other subfolders. I could color coordinate all these if I wanted to. I don't feel the need to. Uh, but I did say all uh, my units and stuff are color coordinated. So if we click curriculum, go to units, <clears throat> all my units folders will be color coordinated because every slide for that unit is that same color too. Helps me stay organized with things. I know that. Uh, purple is dance. So anytime I see purple, I just go, oh, that's my dance unit. Perfect. And I click that and it'll pull up, you know, my dance slideshow, which is purple as well. Lightness questions in here, create a dance songs uh, that I've downloaded to and saved in my drive. And it's just really going to help you stay organized. Then you'll even see your path of your Google Drive up here with all your arrows. Click that, I'll show the different stuff, folders that you have to go back up to to go to my drive. So uh, share drives. <coughs> It's basically a way you can collaborate with other P teachers or other teachers in Google Drive. So for example, we have some for our school, Patterson. I also have one for our PE department because me and a couple other people help run our professional development. Uh, for our PE department, I think there's 21 elementary PE teachers in there. So they all have access to this and we basically use it to uh, share documents of our PLC, came up with a remote learning plan uh, that we can use and templates and stuff. Uh, it is a really cool uh, feature of Google Drive. Shared with me, like I said, not a big deal. My opinion is basically just clutter. I delete it every now and then, just keep my storage uh, storage normal. <clears throat> Recent, I don't really mess with that either, but it's just stuff you've been working on recently. Start, this is a really cool feature. So I have a couple things in here that I use every now and then. So for example, one of the routines we have at our school is <clears throat> if it's your birthday, we do birthday burpees. So I put a little GIF up here. And it's just something, uh, instead of whatever insect activity we're doing that day, if a kid tells me it's their birthday that day or I see them wearing a birthday hat, I you know I need to access this quickly. So I quickly go to my start. I put the slide up on the screen of a GIF of me doing burpees. And then we all sing happy birthday 
uh, after we do maybe their seven that day, they do seven, we all do seven bur birthday burpees together. And then we just go into the main part of our lesson. So you can see it start up here. Uh, <clears throat> if I go into here and I right click this, it's gonna give me options. You can see right here, I could remove it from start. If I click that, it would obviously take it out of here. But if it wasn't in start, I know this is in a folder buried deep somewhere in my drive. But instead of doing that, all I need to do is find it once, right click it, add to start, and then anytime I hit start, it'll pop up here, which is really awesome. Just makes things quick to access. I also have my remote learning plan up here, because that's something I'm working on a lot right now, uh, trash. But yeah, um, Google Drive, if you keep it organized, it's really gonna make your life a lot easier. All right, so uh, the biggest thing I can advise you to do is start using Google Slides or PowerPoint or some sort of thing to put up visuals for your kids. I use Google Slides all the time. It's my favorite part about Google, and in my opinion, it is, oh, I'm sorry, uh, in my opinion, it is the best thing you can do uh, to create visuals for your students. So I actually use Google Slides too as part of my scope and sequence. You can see right here, uh, this is actually a scope and sequence or a yearly plan I made uh, from Kevin Tiller's YouTube video. So he actually, uh, shout out to Kevin Tiller, amazing PD teacher. Uh, I'm actually recording this on Star Wars Day, so happy Star Wars Day, uh, Kevin. But um, he has an awesome website that I'll put in the resources to. He has a YouTube video of how you can use Comic Life to create a yearly plan. Now, you could do this, but uh, Comic Life is a paid app. If you want a free version of this, there is another also amazing website created by Mark and Becky Fulmer that they utilize slides. Uh, and if I'll put this in the resources too, but basically utilizes slide to come up or Google Slides to come up with a yearly plan and you can type stuff in and make a copy for yourself and add this however you need. Now they were really awesome and created all this stuff for other PE teachers to use. All you need to do is create file or a quick file, make a copy and then copy this and it'll automatically save to your drive. And then you can edit it however you need. And you can type in stuff here. Maybe you know, you're working on foot skills and you pull this into September this time. Maybe you need to change out the dates. Uh, edit however you need. But again, just other PE teachers sharing stuff of what they do and how it makes their life easy. And I'll put that in the resources page too for you. So I also use Google Sheets uh, to help out with my scope and sequence and my planning. This is my baby this year. I've been, like I said, I've been working on sheets a lot uh, this year and really focusing on it. It's been helping me out with planning and assessment. This is my scope and sequence kind of. I saw Casey Barclay, I think is how you say her name. Uh, amazing PE teacher. Uh, if you're not following her on Twitter, make sure to follow her on Twitter, post a bunch of awesome resources. And she uh, used a sheet similar to this to come up with ways to integrate intentional SEL lessons. So she came up with this giant template and I was like, man, I really love how she has that laid out. She shared it on Twitter, I made a copy of it, edited it, instead of doing the SEL and uh, intentionally integrating that, I thought it'd be a really easy way for me to kind of plan out everything I got going on. So what I have here is I have it split up for kindergarten through second, third through fifth, and I have different stuff in each of them. But I have, you know, a little, it's basically a big table here. It shows dates, units, focus, how many days of, uh, that unit I'll be doing, instant activity, and the instant activities will actually be linked in here. So if I click this, I click this little link, it actually takes me to the High Five Bank account, which is from Open to Z. And this is something we did uh, as part of that unit. This was our instant activity leading up to that. I believe it was Cooperative Games, or no, Locomotor. So High Five Bank account, uh, and I have slides um, for you know different things we can do for High Five Bank account. And just kind of showing how it, how easy it is to link stuff into that uh, giant sheet. I also have like the actual unit linked in there. So if we click that, take us to our local motor unit. I can see that, you know, I was planning on doing a plainness question about open space. I can try and do, I try and do one grade per week. So I can check the box to see if I did grade the kids because sometimes you run out of time to be honest with you. So you'll see some boxes aren't checked. And the biggest thing is I have a little notes feature here. So this notes feature is something that after every unit, I go in and I type up things that worked well, things that didn't work well, things I needed to change. Sometimes I'll revisit those units throughout the year. And when I revisit them, I go back and I look at what worked well in the previous unit, what didn't work well, what I need to change, what I need to modify. So that has been really helpful. So I have that for everything I've been doing this year and it's been super cool to reflect on 
what's been going on and just to help me stay organized and also use this uh what i'm talking about my planning with my administrators and show them uh everything i got going on in here and just how i keep it organized and it really just helps show that i have that intentional planning uh kind of advocating for you know the education part of physical education it's not just physical activity you know learning is going on in here so uh this has been huge i'll leave a template of this in uh, the resources part of the slides so that way you can come up with your own now instruction like i said i love google slides kind of went on a little rant the last time about it i google, i use google slides to present everything i do so all my units are in slides like i said they're color coordinated so locomotor units is like light blue uh purple color and then my heart adventure is red <clears throat> um, so if we click on these it'll actually we'll actually take a look at one of the slides you and i created for our heart adventure and again, another shout out to an awesome PE teacher, Mike Graham. He's a lot of his visuals for this. Uh, he's got a really awesome website. I'll put it in the resource page too uh, to help create this. And I used his website kind of just to figure out what I want to do with the Heart Adventure unit because I've never taught one before. So I needed to find something that worked. So if uh, we present it, and this is what I'll do with the kids, I'll just have this up here. So after our instant activity, you know, I'll have the intro to our slide up here saying P Dog's Heart Adventure unit. And then the kids will look at this stuff as they're walking over to the center circle. And then they'll be like, all right, so heart adventure. I see there's a heart here in muscles. I see there's lungs breathing. I see there's this little thing going on. And I can utilize gifts to kind of catch their attention, get them thinking, oh my God, what do you think this unit's gonna be about? Maybe the heart and lungs need to work together. Uh, and then, you know, maybe we'll watch a quick video. And the cool thing about Google Sides is you can insert YouTube videos. In here. So I insert a lot of YouTube videos just to kind of uh, teach kids things or just to kind of grab their attention with stuff. I can also put in visuals for oxygen, CO2. I don't even have to mention that, but just them seeing that and hearing me talk about oxygen and carbon dioxide, you know, maybe when they get older, they see that symbol and they're like, oh, I've seen that before. Hmm. They think back to PE. And then uh, the actual what, why, and how for the lesson. So take my breath away tag. This was actually our first activity of this unit. And basically I would read to the kids, you know, all right, what are we learning today? And I actually have a little microphone attached to my neck that I pull out and I hand a kid and be like, all right, Johnny, what are we learning today? He'd be like, oh, your body breathes out carbon dioxide, needs oxygen. Why are we learning it? Learning how your body works will help you stay healthy. And how do you know you'll do it? You will give oxygen to other blood cells during the game. And then, you know, while we're reading that, I might not have a kid, kid paying attention and maybe they're just looking up at the screen and maybe they're actually reading the goal. Maybe they're reading the rules. That's gonna help me out in the long term, anyways, right? It's less explaining I need to do, and maybe that kid's uh, focusing on this part and not down here, and that's okay. So I also use animations uh, and gifts to leave up on the screen all the time, so that way kids can see what to do. So if tagged, they just sit down here. I have a gift of me doing that, and then until someone gives you oxygen. So I have uh, the art teacher who came in, helped make a gift with a red blood cell. She just tossed it to me a little yarn ball. So until you get oxygen, and then once you get oxygen, you do five lunges. So really easy. Uh, the kids, if they don't know how to do lunges, they can look up on the screen, see how to do it. I have a gift of myself doing the lunges. They don't know what to do when they get tagged, they can look on the screen. Uh, the slideshow acts as another teacher in the gym, which is awesome. It allows me to walk around, allows me to you know engage with the students, build those relationships. I can ask them questions, I can check for understanding. I can even, and sometimes I'll do, I'll just join in the game. Kids see Mr. Beal running around having a good time. Uh, and honestly, it makes my day a lot easier. And it's pretty fun to do anyways. Uh, show them that I enjoy what I'm doing. Just really advocating that, you know, physical education is fun. And we are learning stuff. Look, our learning targets are on the slide. <clears throat> Once we're done with that, you know, this might be the next day, risk factor tag. We'll go over cholesterol, couch potato, smoking, and vaping. And then, you know, go over the what, why, and how. Basically, and the color coordination is intentional, right? So I would use yellow noodle for cholesterol, and it was also yellow over here. I use yellow for cholesterol. Uh, if they get tagged with that noodle, they would run one lap. Green for couch potato. If they get tagged, do eight plank ups. And then blue for smoking and vaping, they would do elbows and knees for 10 misses of three seconds. Um, and I'm going over three risk factors of how you might get an unhealthy heart. And afterwards, I can ask them a little playmate question. Now, again, with slides, I can project this up on the screen. It's a little visual I create for my playmate questions. And then, you know, I say, which of these are not a risk factor for heart disease? And hopefully they could answer fruits and veggies. 
And then they would see with the animation check, D is the correct answer. All right, cool, I got the correct answer. I learned what I needed to that day, awesome. And then, you know, I have a slide for every lesson here. Uh, I might go over, and like this entire unit, I might use with K through five, but only certain slides I would use for K one, two, some slides I would use for third, third fourth, and fifth. So like this one, not, again, uh, from Mike Graham, I go over with third, fourth, and fifth, and we talk about how the heart's uh, like a house, and it's got chambers, arteries, or yeah, arteries, <coughs> uh, atriums, and ventricles, and how oxygenated blood flows through stuff, and deoxygenated blood, and we go through all that stuff. Uh, it's partially with third, fourth, and fifth grade, and some things I might use with K1, too. And then here I have another YouTube video uh, attached in here. So this was something that I thought I was going to use with the kids. I decided I didn't want to use it. So it's actually in my notes, I believe, that I need to take that out the next time I revisit the Heart Adventure unit. And then finally, uh, how this kind of helps with uh, is I have a little uh, layout of my gym set up here. So I have a layout of my gym, and then I can add shapes, and I can add uh, clip art in here to show how I need to set it up. So we actually set up an obstacle course at the end of our heart adventure unit, where you carry deoxygenated blood through the blue side, and then you get oxygenated blood from the lungs and go through the red side. And then afterwards, you do one lap around the gym, and you just continue going through obstacle course. And it's all intentional, right? That deoxygenated blood is blue, so I can easily make that the color blue. They can see what parts are going through if they're looking up at the screen. Oxygenated blood is red. They can see what parts they're going through if they're looking up in the screen. And if I can quickly go through uh, how to go through this obstacle course one time, but then if kids have questions, they can just report up to the screen and check to see what to do, right? It acts as an extra teacher, which is super, super helpful. Uh, Google Slides is a game changer for your program. Uh, I also use Google Classroom a little bit too. I have Classroom set up for all my second through fifth grade kids. I'll share out links to, sometimes I'll share out links to my slideshows, maybe kids, like for example, my jump rope unit, I always share it out with them because kids are asking, so we all wanna practice this stuff at home and I have a lot of gifts on there. So they can uh, practice at home with their own jump rope, show their parents what they're doing too, really nice way to advocate for your program. And uh, during our fitness unit, I actually shared out this, so get your workout on. This is another example of how slides can be super beneficial for you. And this isn't a slide I created, this is actually a slide that Becky Fulmer created, another amazing, uh, phys ed uh, person. Her and Mark had the cbhp.org website, and she created this to help out other PE teachers, right, and just shared it out on her website for us to use, which is really awesome, and it's a really cool uh, slide. So kids can just work through it, and they can click uh, their own stuff for their own workout. So their warm-up, what do they want to do? Maybe they want to jog. So they're jogging around, they can use a timer, and they're done, they click. Maybe I use upper body or lower body for the first workout, lower body, uh, click when done. Uh, core flexibility, maybe they're using core. Uh, do that many, click when done. And then we'll just quickly go through the rest of this, but you can kind of see how they get to choose how they exercise. Uh, and it is just, the kids love this one. This was really cool. So maybe they're doing power exercises, coordination. Uh, and then once they're all done, they go through a cool down. So maybe they want to do a side slide uh, for three minutes when they're all done actually see the benefits of physical activity. So my kids, I've been doing some, some of them have been using this for their remote learning too, which is also pretty cool because they get to see how important it is to be physically active. And like I said, the really amazing part is I didn't create this. This was created by somebody else who just wanted to make this better for all of us. So people sharing out digital resources, utilizing Google Slides and sharing them out as links, is really just helping out all of his ad and advocating for the profession uh, as a whole. And then she just gives credit to the people who have the gifts in here. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> All right, uh, for assessment and grading, I do use Google Forms a little bit, uh, mainly for skill assessment though, and I'll put a link to uh, Mike Graham. Uh, he's got a YouTube video in there uh, showing you how to create a skill assessment in Google Forms, which is really helpful. I'll actually show you kind of what it looks like. So I have a sample one here with uh, kindergarten class. So in my sample one, what I would have is I have an iPad where I walk around the gym and I use it sometimes if we do a skill assessment or I'll use it for Class Dojo too. Uh, I just click on this Google form that I have set up and then I type in their skill. So maybe they're working on skipping. So the assess skill is skipping. Uh, everything I do is out of a four point rubric and we'll go over that when I show you my grade book. Uh, and then I would check to see my students, you know, student one, uh, you know, kindergarten GLO, they're trying to just maintain locomotor skills with balance. 
maybe they're excelling at skipping. They have no problem with it. Maybe the next one's doing all right. Maybe uh, the other one's falling all over the place. Maybe this one's uh, at that got it level. Maybe this one's not here that day. Maybe this one has a medical excuse they broke their leg. Afterwards, I just hit submit, and all that data gets submitted to me electronically. So I don't have a paper and a pencil and a clipboard going around trying to see uh, who skipped, uh, who got a four, who got a three, so on and so forth. Just a nice way to make your life a little bit easy. Uh, I also use Google Forms for cognitive assessments. So I did say I share stuff out through Google Classroom. This is an example of what I'll, how I share out of Google Form in Classroom. So I actually use this with my fourth graders, uh, health-related fitness components. Uh, with this, you know, kids just click, what class are you in? 4C, 4L, uh, what's your first and last name? And then you can see over here it says one point. So I have these questions set up uh, for one point for each question. After they answer the questions, it automatically assigns them a point if they get it correct. So at the end, it's out of four points. And uh, if they got all four correctly, that automatically goes in my grade book as that kid received the four. So I don't have to go through and grade these afterwards. Google automatically does that for me. I just have to set it up ahead of time. Uh, and they just go through, answer the questions, allows me to put pictures up here to give them options. Super beneficial and super helpful. And then this is that other uh, sheets uh, thing I said I've been working on. So the grade book, uh, shout out to Adam Metcalf, by the way, another amazing PE teacher uh, helped me out at the Iford Convention this year, setting this up or giving me ideas for it. I know he had a presentation today too, so hopefully you checked his out. Really awesome guy. Uh, so I have a grading scale. This is what works at my district, and this is how it works. Uh, we have letter grades for everything. So I assign everything out of a four-point scale. And if a kid gets above a three, they get an S plus or a three, or I'm sorry, or an A. Or if they in kindergarten, if they get above a 2.5, they get a P, which means progressing. If they get under it, they would get a G, which means growth need. So um, let's see. If I go into first grade here, <clears throat> maybe student number one, you know, uh, Joe Bones, I type in their name. I have a little drop down here, everything's on a four point scale. First thing they're doing is working on skipping. So I can see right now, this box here is taking the overall average. So it's taking the average of all the scores in here. I only have a four, so their overall grade would be a four. If they get a four, they get an S plus, which is great. Maybe uh, later in the year, we're working on jump rope and they're having a really hard time, they get a one. So now it takes the average four and one, 2.5, brings their grade down to an S. Maybe they got a question wrong in one of our cognitive assessments, now they're down to an N. Maybe they get a four, a four, and they do really good for the rest of the year. Let's see if I can get it back up to S plus. Cool. So uh, at the end of the year, or at the end of the quarter, once I have all their grades in here, I just copy and paste, put it in my grade book, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, right? And it has that set up for, you know, third, fourth, and fifth grade here too, uh, kindergarten too, and, uh, how this works is, I'll go over it quickly, but I do have a YouTube video in the resource page that goes over how to use the VLOOKUP function. In Sheets, you can add functions to it. So basically you put in data and it uh, does an equation based off of what you want. So if I type in equals average right here, I could assign it to take the average of these scores. After it takes the average in this section, I need it to find this average over here. So look up K2, so K, two, I need to look up that score is a three. So based off of that score, it needs to go to the grading scale of D3 and D6 and E3 and E6. So if it goes over here to grading scale, D3 to D6, E3 to E6. So it checks to see what they scored and based off of what they scored, it automatically assigns them that letter grade. So uh, that is through the VLOOKUP function. And again, I will have a link to that in the resource page. Check it out. And I'll actually have a template that you can use for this gradebook too if you want to use something like this. <clears throat> all right, so Google Docs also allows you to collaborate with other people or Google Slides or any Google function, you can collaborate with other teachers and you can share that stuff out. Now, I'm sure a bunch of other PE teachers who share stuff out on Twitter I uh, will appreciate this. I think I saw this visual from Joe Bailey. I don't know where she found it, but again, shout out to her, awesome PE teacher. Uh, but if you ever see something that somebody shared out, whether it's on Twitter, on their website, and it's in view only, and you can't uh, edit it, please, 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 please do not request edit access. All that does is it will send that person who created it an email 
saying, uh, hey, I'm trying to access your slide. Instead of doing that, what you can do is you can make a copy of that slide or that document or that whatever, and it will automatically make a copy of it and add it to your Google Drive. Uh, and also, if you are sharing stuff out with students and somebody else owns that document, make sure to make a copy of it before you send out to students. So you're the owner in case your kids accidentally uh, request the access. That way that person who created it's not receiving 100 emails and, uh, from 8 to 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, it really can be uh, kind of a pain. And then also I'm gonna show you how you can share stuff out so that way it's in use template. Uh, another really cool feature I just found out about this maybe a month or two ago, but we're gonna play with it right here. So you can see up here at the top uh, in Google, or any Google document, um, basically it's a link to a website, right? So we're working on everything on the internet here. If I copy up to here where it says edit and I hit backspace and I type in the words template backslash preview and I hit enter, what's gonna happen is this will now save as a template, right? So now if I took this link and I copied it and I shared it out on a website or through Twitter, everyone's gonna see it like this, right? So they can go through and they can look, hmm, is this something I wanna put in my drive? Is it something I don't need? Whatever, and then if they do wanna put it in their drive, they hit use template. And this would automatically save into their Google Drive. And that way you don't have to worry about people requesting editing access. It's gonna make your life a lot easier if you're someone who shares out stuff. Uh, just something cool I found out, I wanted to share it out with people. But we're not gonna do that here because this is my slideshow and I have uh, rights to it. So we're just gonna put it back here. and I'm not sharing this part. All right, so let's get back into the presentation here. Um, again, if just put a way to where it says edit, type in template preview, it's gonna make your life a lot easier. All right, uh, and then basically moving forward with all this. Honestly, after uh, we're done with coronavirus. I don't know what PE is going to look like, whether we're going to have to do remote learning for a long time after this, whether uh, we're going to go back into the gym, do social distancing, uh, everyone has masks, and we all just stand six feet apart and do personal wellness journeys. I have no idea. But I do know that if you utilize some of these digital resources, hopefully it's going to make your life a little bit easier, right? Using that projector uh, to push out stuff for remote learning, a lot of the stuff you see here with little slides will hopefully apply and make your life easier for those sheets with the grades. And hopefully I can give you some resources that will help you out in the long run. So this is the thing I'm gonna share out with everybody. Uh, you can click the different links in here. Uh, right here under organization, we talked about organizing your Google Drive. So there's a YouTube video about organizing your Google Drive. There's a little blog of tips and tricks you can uh, go through for organizing your drive. And then scope and sequence, <clears throat> I showed you that yearly plan template. So that yearly plan template, that was at uh, Google Slides version on the cbhpe.org website, uh, where you can click on this and you can use the template of that and edit it however you need. There's a YouTube video to that Comic Life uh, yearly plan that I showed you that I used from Kevin Tiller. Uh, he goes through really easily how to create this in Comic Life and it does look really nice. Uh, and then this is my scope and sequence template that I created with Google Sheets. So you can use that too. Uh, that is, in my opinion, super helpful, especially that reflection portion and edit however you need, right? All this stuff I'm sharing with you, make a copy of it, make sure it's in your drive, edit it to fit your needs and to uh, help out your students. Instruction, I do have a Google Doc uh, set up just with a bunch of, or a couple units I've taught and I've made slideshows up and shared them out on Twitter. This activities I created and made slideshows up, you can make copies of those too and edit them to fit your needs. Uh, I also said I did that ESP chat, uh, talked about Google Slides and the workshop with that. You can click on these and it takes you to Wakelet, uh, reading through all those tweets of that. And hopefully it'll give you some uh, resources of how you can kind of maneuver Google Slides and navigate it and use it to help you out. Assessment and grading, that gradebook template, that's that sheet I was talking about that I would make the template of and share it out with you if you click that. You can go in there, edit however you need. The VLOOKUP function, this VLOOKUP, I'm not gonna lie, it is a little complicated and sheets, I'm not the expert yet. I'm still learning, uh, but if you wanna use that VLOOKUP function to calculate grades, this is a YouTube video that I used uh, to help me figure out how to do that. 
Uh, and then utilizing Google Forms for school assessment. This is a YouTube video by the Mike Graham. Uh, he goes over how to use Google Forms in a school assessment, how to create that too, which was really helpful. And then these are only three websites I use. I use a bunch, but these are probably the top three I would say that I'm on all the time. Uh, CBHP.org, Beck, Becky and Mark Fulmer, you guys created an amazing resource. Thank you so much. Uh, there's so many phys ed teachers sharing on there of gifts that they've created, uh, slides that they use for their students. There's a big at home uh, PE uh, section of it too, which is awesome. Uh, PhysEdReview.weebly.com, that's Kevin Tiller's website. Awesome resource too, check it out. He's got a bunch of links, digital lessons on there, really cool stuff. Then my Graham's website, PE for every kid, at Weebly.com. Uh, again, uh, just three people, but if you just Google search Phys Ed, uh, start looking around. Uh, there's a bunch of amazing resources out there that you can use uh, and that people are just willing to help out. Honestly, uh, for a year three teacher, if I didn't kind of dive into all these digital resources, I would still be struggling. And it would not be good for me, it would not be good for my students. So very appreciative to all the teachers out there who are willing to put in time to help. And just get on Twitter. Twitter's got so many resources available for everybody. Uh, people are always out there trying to improve uh, phys ed in general and just to help each other out. It's really an awesome, awesome, awesome thing. All right, and lastly, if you have any questions for me, like I said, uh, I'm on Twitter. You can follow me at Mr. Beals PE. Uh, if you follow me on there, reach out to me, I'll get back to you, just email me. Send me an email, this is my personal email address here. Uh, I'm happy to help and um, <clears throat> just trying to make phys ed a little bit easier for you and hopefully give you some ideas and tricks that you can add to your program. So thanks so much uh, and have a great day.